Hello. I was wanting to do this one for a while, so I was wanting to explain the differences between the different aluminum alloys. Um, the the different or difference between them is usually what's inside of them. Some add like this is extruded. There's 6061 and 7075. This one has just like a half a percent of silicon content to it, and mostly aluminum. And this one has a small amount of magnesium in it, which two metals that are extremely light added together make quite a dense and heavy alloy when it's together. Kind of interesting, but it's very, very strong. These are total crap for melting. Um, here's an example of extruded melted. As you can see, it flowed into the out of the crucible, all right, but it did not want to flow. You see the outer edges are all rounded over. Now this is normal cast. See the sharp edges, how it flows? The difference is the silicon content in it. Um, those are okay. Or the these I started out with the extruded stuff and had tons of problems. If you're trying to do anything that's thin that has like fins or something on it, it will not flow out to the fins. Um, the there is some other alloys out there. Usually, what you want to get is let me clean this off here. Uh, engine parts. You want engine parts. Something that. That right there is called A356. This has about 6% silicon to, and the rest mostly is aluminum. It might have like a quarter percent of something else added in, but that's pretty much all it is. Just mainly silicon and aluminum, about 6%. The, this is the best stuff to cast with. You can take and get like this down here, like engine pistons, how everybody tells you they're real good. Another source of it is um, boat propellers, aluminum boat propellers, but it is usually A413. It's a die cast alloy, which is about about 10 to 15 percent silicon content to it. So it's kind of like the A356, the cast stuff, but it's it just has double the silicon content. What you can do is fill up a crucible half full of engine pistons, and that one, the extruded, and you get pretty much the same thing as A356 because this is 12% pretty much this is pretty much nothing less than 1% and A356 is around 6% so you'll be in essence cutting the silicon content of this in half and adding to this so you can do that it makes the same thing yeah that's A413 now, you can take and find a lot of this die cast aluminum. This is usually A380. This has 8 to 15 percent silicon, or 10 to 15 percent silicon also, but about 5 percent copper. They add the copper in because it doesn't, it helps. Um, reduce oxidation stuff.
you can tell it's die cast. This is an old uh, temperature sensor off of, uh, off of a hot water heater, a gas powered one, a regulator. But it is A380. Usually around around 10 to 12 percent silicon on average, and around 5 percent, 4 to 5 percent copper. This stuff is okay, but it does flow in the molds pretty good. If you get like motors and stuff, electric motors, you may find that it's die cast, and this will be what it's out of the A380. Let me grab this here. Some examples. Um, the problem with adding copper to the aluminum alloys, it causes a lot of shrinkage, or it increases the chance of shrinkage. And if you have something that's like a corner like this, right in the corner here, it'll want to tear. When it cools, it'll want to pull away from the corner and it'll create what's called hot tear. Because it wants to shrink more. If you made it out of, <laughs> made this out of an alloy that has a lot of copper content, like 5% copper, this here will have a dip in the center because it shrinks more than the castable. And if you tried making the stuff like this or this, you see how all the edges are nice and sharp. If you try casting this out of the extruded aluminum, you can guess what's going to happen. You're not going to flow into the nice corners. It's just going to kind of round itself over and not really flow in very well. You really have to superheat it to get it to do that, then that adds a lot more porosity and a lot more problems. But, I think that's it. Just a shorty. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention how to actually tell the difference between these two. You see how it's kind of all white and corroded looking? This is A356. It does not have any copper in it, but this, on the other hand, has been sitting out in the weather and everything else, and it's still just a dull gray. No corrosion, no white oxide, no nothing. This is the A380 with the copper content to it. And that's about it. That's, I think that's what I'm going to add. Okay, thanks for watching.